So now you tell this humorous story in your book when, when, uh, under uh, a title, Hypocrisy of the Elite. So you get mm-hmm. this call from a guy named Jeff Bezos. You have no idea who this guy is, and you say, well, I'm too busy. Um, you, you interact with Hillary Clinton, with Jon Stewart, with Meryl Streep, and, and, and the list goes on. You, you, you are in full view of the elite of America, and yet you have come to the conclusion that dealing with the elite – with the power brokers in America is not the solution. Why? So when I came to America, I did not come with any concept, like concept of what the Democrat Party or conservative, or I have no biases whatsoever. I just came with open heart. And initially I did genuinely believe these people are saying publicly saying they, they denounce slavery, especially Hillary Clinton. How many she talks about the women's, uh, empowerment, you know, how she thinks she's so passionate about bringing girls up and championing for women's rights. I believed all that. I read her memoir. I think you can read it in my first book. I was reading Oprah Winfrey. I was reading the Hillary Clinton's memoir and I was reading the Obama's memoir. I was reading all these books and got so inspired. I came to America and then. By some fortune, I had a lot to meet these people in private and talk to them. So I had a great hope that if I really tell them what is happening to North Korean women, there are 300,000 North Korean women right now in China are trapped. They get raped, they get killed, their organs are harvested out of them. And there is no, there's hardly relying about it. Everybody is keeping silence about it. And if I told these people what was happening, I thought they are going to go stand up for the women's rights. But when I actually told them about this the crisis, all they did was like, please don't tell people that you know me because they do not want to be associated to somebody who is exploiting Chinese Communist Party. They were the complete hypocrites. They are the cowards. They were so corrupt, just like North Korean elites. But they're just disguising themselves in this great, amazing social justice terms. All about, oh, we, slavery is wrong. We need to end the discrimination. But when there's actual slavery happening, they do not take the stand. And that's when I understood, oh, this is all play they are doing to gain more power, to gain more money and get elected in a higher positions in the government and selling more products on Amazon company. And this is a strategy that they are using to become rich themselves. It wasn't they are saying it because they actually cared about these issues. And that's when I got disillusioned and stopped really meeting these people because they, they, they are just liars. I, I want you to do a contrast for the audience. Uh, I've heard you do this before, and I think it's very helpful. The difference between crony capitalism and what I believe in, I, you believe in capitalism, I believe mm-hmm. in Christian capitalism, which means uh, responsibility associated with wealth. But contrast capitalism as you see it as the engine that has lifted so many millions out of poverty, that has enhanced uh, the world in so many dynamic ways, and then crony capitalism, which you sort of have already hinted at. Yeah, I think with the example that I can see is that there's nothing wrong about creating wealth and creating profit. In North Korea, the word profit is banned because they shame profit. They think somehow profit is bad. But by enriching other people's lives and you make money, that's a completely good thing that I see virtue in profit. If you don't like creating a drug and killing people and indoctrinating children, that's, it's a good thing as long as you don't do that. But now what I see is that this, this crony capitalist is in, in bed with the government officials, with the corrupt. They don't compete fairly anymore. Like as you can see, even this Hunter Biden investigation, that is a, Perfect example of crony capitalism. They go bribe the son of the vice president and telling them of a project in China they want to do in America. They want to make money. That is really not what initial capitalism was intended. That's really called a, I don't even know, like you, you can say, I guess, best term is crony capitalism at this point, but that is not the capitalism that I support personally. 
it's, it's, it's the free market that I support is there's no corruption between government officials. There's no intervention. You're just fairly and squarely competing with your pure product, with your pure competence in the marketplace and benefiting other people through a great medicine, great technology, great even safe cars, right? That's a real good thing. So we should support the profit. We should support the capitalism. But there's so many new trends that happen in America that is concerning me with in embedding with these corrupt politicians and you are willing to sell your country by a few million dollars, literally. You are willing to sell your nation security for just your personal benefit. And that is not capitalism, for sure. You're one of the few people that has the courage to speak about China. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so much pushback when you do. I spent a lot of time in China over the years, and I've seen a big transition in China. Uh, it's happening right now. I mean, you had uh, the the horrors under communism. The Black mm -hmm. Book of Communists now says not 78 million or 100 million, but maybe 200 million people die as a result of the communist regime, Stalin and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I should say Mao. Mao was worse than actually Stalin. Um, and, and, and so you have, you have the horrors of, of what happened under the Maoist regime, the famines, uh, the cultural revolution, so forth. Then you have under Deng Xiaoping, you have, mm. uh, you, you have a lot of people lifted out of poverty. Now under Xi, mm -hmm. you have this authoritarian control again, and, and, and you have explained that very eloquently, and I think it's worth it for our listeners to have some concept of what's taking place in China and how we are so beholden to China that we can't really say anything unless we want to lose our livelihood, unless we want to lose our place in the world. Yeah, this is a thing where I was baffled how much people were not educated on China, the history of China and what Chinese people went through under Mao. It's a, it's a perfect example how absolute power corrupts absolutely. Under Mao, minimum, there are more than 50 million people died by this man-made starvation, right? It's a man-made mismanagement and starvation that he killed so many of his own people. And in America, they often just know about Hitler or a Holocaust, but they don't understand the degree of the death that China imposed through their state-governed go control. And that trend is happening under Xi Jinping. He changed literally government constitution and made himself eternal leader. And he is a dictator for sure now. He's a completely a dictator like Mao. And under him, I think it's China is a complete police state. It's not a humane society that is like some of our like allies in Japan or like you know France or UK. In China, the people really cannot even write a wrong word on online. They cannot go to school or go to get a loan or get a job if they don't follow the government's like indoctrination. And so, yeah, North Koreans in a way more impoverished way of police state, but China is also in a way slightly more affluent police state. But the liberty is gone in that land. So when Hollywood, actually, when my first book wanted to, was going to try to become a movie. And then the Hollywood studio producer sent me a script. And in the script says that China was my promised land. When I got China, I wasn't getting raped at 13 and sold as a human like sex slave. They were protecting me and gave me a safety and refuge. And I asked the producer, like, what are you talking about? Like, this is a complete lie. And he said, this is the only way we can make a movie about North Korea in current Hollywood because they are funding so many American movies. They have to portray as China as a good guys and lying to American people. So I think really like American institutions embedded in China is a sign how they do not stand up for human rights at all and they, how they are not supporting democracy at all. It's an actual thing that we need to expose in America, but you can't because so many powerful people are making money with this deal they are making with China, and they're lying to American people about the threat of China. They are, they are posing to the entire humanity, really. Something that maybe you can elaborate on as well is why in the world 
would China facilitate North Korea? What's in it for China? So there are many reasons, but the main reasons is really first, they use a North Korea as a buffer zone. So not South Korea and North Korea are right, like one democracy, one is socialism. And uh, there is a Japan across that ocean nearby and then America. So if North Korea collapses and become part of South Korea, at their door, there's American military is in it and also the free democracy is in it. So this time, instead of North Koreans are looking at China and admiring those lights coming from China, this time, China is going to look at North Korea admiring those free democracies that people enjoy in the free, free you know, country like America, Japan, and South Korea. So that, and then it can infuse that instability that China is having. They have 56 different ethnicities. China is very diverse. And in that, there's Uyghurs, there's Tibetans. There are many groups in China who want to be independent. They don't want to be part of China. They were different countries. They were diff- uh, invaded by China, and they are oppressed by China right now. So they could be like fighting for their independence, getting empowered by this, you know, North Korea becoming free. So that is a buffer zone that China does not want to lose. And the second is a leverage tool against America. Whenever America needs to North Korea to stop the nuclear test, stop threatening their allies like Japan, they need to ask Kim Jong-un to do it. But Kim Jong-un does not even pick up the call from Biden. The only person they can talk to and make North Korea to get the message out is through China. China, North Korea listens to China. So it's a great leverage whenever they want to negotiate with America, they can say, okay, we can make North Korea listen to you about this part. So that leverage tool is very important in the diplomacy. They keep that. So because of these two main reasons that China will never give up on North Korea unless America puts a humongous like pressure on them. Otherwise, North Korea is a very useful tool for China to maintain as it is and costing them that, not much that cost either. Like it's not that much money they're spending and getting all this advantage out of North Korea. You talked about the, the poverty in mm-hmm. North Korea, the oppression, uh, the horrible conditions. And yet, I think it's helpful for people to understand just how powerful North Korea is. It, it is a nuclear power. It has chemical weapons. It has biological weapons. I mean, people don't understand that this small country, relatively small country, uh, poses an enormous threat to the world. I mean, they're standing military the size of it, I think is the fourth largest in the world. But people have no concept of just how significant they are on the one hand, impoverished, on the other hand, very powerful. Yeah, it's, it's in a way, it's so contradictory to Americans. Like if the nation is like, is the fourth largest military in the whole world, why people are starving, people are starving not because the country is poor, because it's, it's to control starving people. Because starving people are not going to think about meaning of life and how to make their lives better. Starving people only think that they worry about surviving looking for next meal, right? So starving, starvation is a tool for Kim Jong-un to control people. That's why North Korea is a tool for. So since Kim Jong-un got elected, or didn't get elected, inherited the throne from his own father, he conducted more than 40-something missile tests. One missile test can feed the entire nation for an entire year. That's how much money it costs. So if he did less four tests during the time, Nobody in North Korea had to go start, but he chose not to do that. So the, that people poor is nothing to do with the, the capability of North Korean regime. The military is very strong. They have a capability to reach American mainland to attack the nuclear power. And that capability is going so rapidly. That speed is so fast. Even for the last two years after Biden got elected, North Korea's nuclear test is like an everyday thing now. Their capability is so high. What I am concerned is that eventually North Korea is going to become too big to fail. They're too powerful. We might just have to be negotiating North Korea and sit in the table and listen to what they're saying. Because already we are getting to the point where they're so strong. The, if we, something happens to 
North Korea, they can just completely annihilate entire 50 millions of South Koreans in the South. Right, the cost, human cost is so big. And we are reaching that point where we just have to let North Korea be. And I just don't think that's a good future for humanity to have a dictator having this, mind, this, this much power and nothing can hold him accountable.